What I want to do today as much as possible is, first of all, I'm going to try and talk slowly, which is very difficult. The deal for this is that if I talk slowly, I want you to train slowly. I want you to look at the mechanics of what we're doing to remove all vigour and force from what you're doing, and purely to look at line and angle. Does everybody understand this? Good. Yeah. Good. Does anyone not understand this? <laughs> Good. Does anyone not understand what I just said about understanding or not understanding? <laughs> Excellent. So, what I want to do in part is to not just have a straightforward lesson where we're just going to do lots of techniques, I also want you to engage me in some of the um, <coughs> thoughts I have about 133 three, and I think things that hopefully um, are evident as you look through. And one of the things that I've obsessed about for quite some years is the idea of 133 three very definitely being a predominantly offline system, one which moves circularly around online. And I believe that there's several evidences for this. Um, the first evidence I'd like to borrow, could I possibly borrow your sword, please? Is, and could I borrow someone's run for the And could I get you to borrow someone's sword as well, please? <laughs> so the first evidence I would offer for this is the nature of the, the fall beneath. Everybody know fall beneath? Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, everybody know the fall beneath? So against half shield, we adopt fall beneath. Yeah, yeah, so you've got half shield here, and here, the so, shield. Fall beneath. Thank you. Ah, okay. So here, so we have basically a training related system. Now if I do this and I fall on this side of the sword, it really doesn't offer me any great defenses at all. So the first indicator I believe that we can have that the system is offline is that our fall beneath really needs to take us to one side or it loses our value. Okay? Very, very much if we're here, if we if our partner puts pressure on the blade and takes it this way, then that's fine, but then again, we've created an offline blade, they've created the offline chorus circuit if needed. One of the other things is, please relax. Okay, there's not going to be very many of these points, so it's going to actually be quite a, a quick um, understanding of this. The next thing is, how many times is footwork mentioned in 133? Once, okay? So, then we need to know, because footwork is only mentioned once, which foot is forward in 133? No, no, no. <laughs> Do we not? Because if there's, in a fencing manual, if there's one piece of information about footwork, and it says that you can either go forward with your left foot or back with your right foot, what does that tell us? That the only bit of information we have is that the right foot is forward. Okay, now there's been some discussion as to whether uh, the right foot is forwards almost entirely throughout the manuscript. What I would suggest is that probably yes it is, and one of the reasons I'll give you for this is Cavendish, and also to the okay? Which is that if I'm walking circularly, yeah, well, let me take this another way, if I'm walking linearly towards my opponent, if I'm going this way here, and I offer my right foot, then obviously everything to my right hand side becomes very, very disadvantaged if my partner can get to the outside of me. Does everybody understand this? So if my partner can get to this side, it causes me a lot of problems if I'm going very, very linearly, okay? However, if I'm walking around my partner, then it makes sense for me to keep my right foot towards them. Cavendish talks about this, this is very, very dominant in Destreza as well, is the idea that if I'm going around, I want this foot ready to be able to issue. And if I'm going around this way, I still want this foot closest towards my partner, because it's my most aggressive foot. Does this make sense? So, we have only one piece of information that tells us whether we should be moving our feet in a particular way. And that tells us that we should be removing our right foot or taking the left foot forward. Okay? So this, I believe, is the first two indicators. Now, who watched um, Roland's video about footwork and being towards the feet? Okay? Now, I don't care what you think about it, to be honest. It's either true or it's not true. I don't mind. And uh, surety is the enemy of inquiry, as far as I'm concerned. We need to be as open-minded as we can about things. One of the things I would say, however, <coughs> is that 133 certainly has what appears to be a heel striking point in it, at least one. But there is a very, very important part of structure which is dictated by movement, which makes you put your toes down more <coughs> commonly than not. So if we're going forwards, our natural gait generally is to 
heel toe impact. Yes? Okay? However, if we're to go around, yes, you can put your heel down, but it's also very, very common to put the side of your foot down or to put your toes down first. So when we start moving sideways, and if you, any of you are sort of uh, PT trainers or anything like this, you'll begin to understand this hopefully. Here, the putting of the foot down with the toes first becomes a lot more normal, or searching out with the toes becomes a lot more normal. So I believe that we have quite a lot of evidence to suggest that 133 is offline. If you combine the fact that if you have your right foot forwards and it's linear, it becomes very, very weak to the outside of your arm. The foot position, I believe, is more indicative of foot positions which are used when you're going offline. Okay? None of this is true, it is opinion. But I believe as we'll go through, I'll give you several circumstances where you moving further offline becomes more important to you. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any major problems with what I just said? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> 